Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is June the 16th, 2020. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now news is breaking that the commissioner of Major League Baseball, Rob Manfred, is saying that because they haven't been able to reach a deal with the players, even though they have the contractual right to impose the season on the players, a 50-game season, that uh, they're thinking about just canceling the season of baseball. Right? Understand, this is a sport that survived through events like World War II. But of course, here, the owners and players, even though COVID-19 is in remission, <clears throat> can't figure out a way to put together a product, even though other sports leagues, uh, Bundesliga, for example, are on the field. Well, let me just say, it says if the players get the tax breaks that the owners get. It's ridiculous. I'm wearing a Clayton Kershaw jersey today, just in mourning. We'll talk about boxing in a second, but let me just say, with regard to baseball, you know, the owners are acting as if the players share in the appreciation of team values, as if the players get money from the parking charged by the owners at games. Out here in the Bay Area, they charge $40 for parking at a San Francisco Giants game. It's as if the players get the political and business clout owners get from owning the local sports team. Shame on baseball's owners. What a joke. Don't be surprised if fans like me aren't enthusiastic next April. Let's go to the land of Jose Carlos Ramirez. Right? You know... If you've been keeping your eye on the ball in boxing, that this man is the ruler of the 140-pound weight class. Understand, he is the WBC and WBO unified. Right? His fight style is to throw a fastball game at you. Right? He shows up, his attitude is, here's my fastball. Can you hit it? What are you going to do about it? I'm not going to spend a lot of time reading your feints. I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to figure out your game plan. So, first round against Maurice Hooker last year. He shows up and he's throwing hooks deep in the pocket. Hooker's a stylist. Hooker is a technician. The problem with being a technician in boxing is that you're a student for the first two rounds of a fight. You're so busy taking notes that sometimes you forget to defend yourself. Right? So Hooker gets roughed up in the first round, hits the canvas. We can debate whether or not Ramirez steps on his foot Understand it's irrelevant to Ramirez. The pocket's his kitchen, and he's there to cook. Right? So Ramirez, of course, takes Hooker's title in the middle of the fight by stoppage. Now, let me just say, Ramirez is impressive because he also beat Jose Zepeda, another name you need to know. The reason why it's important is Jose Pedraza, who's fighting Mikel Lespierre, lost to Jose Zepeda when he moved up to 140 pounds. In other words, Jose Carlos Ramirez has beaten the man who beat the man. He's unified. He's where these fighters, the sniper, Jose Pedraza, 
and Slick Mick, Les Pierre, want to get. Right? Understand. At 140, you have a bunch of very advanced technicians. Not just Maurice Hooker, but these two men. Jose Pedraza and Mikel Lespierre. Right? These are the slick guys. You've heard the expression, oil and water. Well, this fight is oil versus oil. Folks, it's what I call an oil slick. Two very slick fighters. Very slick. Right? Lespierre is a southpaw. So this fight's going to feature even more slickness. Right? Righty against Southpaw. You have the cagiest of cagey veterans. Both in their 30s. Pedraza, 31. Les Pierre, 35. Right? Les Pierre trains with Johan Guzman. One of the slickest fighters I've ever seen. When I say slick, what do I mean? Both of these guys will be rolling away from punches. Both of these guys will be blocking punches. There are going to be a lot of feints. Both of these guys are going to spend time reading each other. Learning about each other. There are going to be a lot of traps. There are going to be a lot of decoys. There are going to be a lot of adjustments. There's going to be a lot of defense. The bet I like here is the over. Right? It's the over. I just don't see how a fight between two KG vets like this who have built their careers being highly technical. Understand, Les Pierre's only loss is to Maurice Hooker. Understand, Jose Pedraza's only professional losses were to Loma, Gavante, and Zepeda. Right? These guys have a problem with aggressive fighters, guys like Jose Carlos Ramirez, who has yet to fight either. Right, Rocky Marciano type fighters who come out and who aren't that concerned with your style. They throw hard, they're ready, they're convinced that you're the one who has to make adjustments. Those guys are going to give guys like this problems. Right? But when you put guys like this, slicksters, again, Pedraza calls himself the sniper. Lespierre calls himself slick mick. In my favorites folder here on YouTube, I have a fight that I believe is from Slick Mick's YouTube account. I believe this video is the kind of video that Lespierre himself admires. It's highlights of a fight where he's fighting a taller guy and you know what he's doing. He's dipping, he's ducking, he's making the guy miss. He's slick, he's oily. Right? Guys like this, when they fight each other, expect the fight to go a lot of rounds. These are deep fighters. If these were baseball players, these are the pitchers setting you up for change-ups on 3-2 counts. These are the guys dancing around the strike zone, trying to figure out which part of the strike zone. You have a problem hitting the ball. Right? They're setting you up 
These are the guys who throw, figuratively, a hundred pitches by the start of the sixth round uh, inning. Right? These guys are going to be doing a lot of work. Movement, angles, this, that, chess, match. Neither guy is a big KO puncher. I believe Pedraza only has 13 KOs. Les Pierre has less than that. So one of the secrets to betting is sometimes you don't have to know who wins the fight. You just look at the styles and you say to yourself, you know what, this is going to go a while. Right, let me make sure that I'm here with a supersized soda. Because this is going to last for a bit. Let me go one step further, too. Now, I'm a big fan of Jose Pedraza's. But even I consider the 10 to 1 line to be ridiculous. So for the speculators, not the betters, but the speculators, you know who you are. Right? You're the person who bets on a asymmetrical stock that you're hoping to get 5x, 10x times your money if things hit right. Right? If you're a speculator and you're just looking for a speculative play and you understand that this is a fight with Big Vig. In other words, Pedraza shouldn't be a 10 to 1 favorite. He is. Les Pierre, you're not getting 10 to 1 odds on his side of the play. You're only getting 5.5 to 1 odds because the casino realizes the line's completely off. Right? If you're a speculator, you might want to hedge the over with Les Pierre simply to win. Folks, you're getting tremendous odds. Let's be clear here. This is speculation. I don't expect Les Pierre to win. But the odds matter. At a certain point, at a certain point, people who expect the favorite to win are going to say, you know what? You're compensating me so much with a play on the loser in a fight that I believe is not going to have a KO, is going to go the distance. So it's going to be a beauty contest at the end of the day. The judges are going to decide it. Right? You're offering me so much to take the underdog. I'll be your huckleberry. So what I'm recommending, give me a moment, Amazon, cancel alarm. Not set. Hey Google, cancel alarm. You know, I live with so much tech, one wonders uh, whose place this is. Well, anyway, I'll just say this. The bet I'm recommending here is the over. If you're just looking for a win, if you're a gambler and you're just saying, gee, how can I invest some money and have a reasonable expectation? There are no certainties in betting, but have a reasonable expectation of a win. Then the bet I'm recommending here is the over. If you're a little bit more adventurous than that and you want a provocative hedge, then the bet I'm recommending is the over hedged with the underdog to win this fight because the odds here are unbalanced. Understand, Les Pierre operates out of New York City. Right? He's hanging around with a former boxing champion as his trainer. To me, New York City and Johan Guzman equal spectacular sparring. Let's go one step further. Forget the sparring. Just look at the tapes. Look at the head movement on the video I have posted. Look at how this guy can linger around the pocket and not get hit. Excellent defensive fighter. Now since he's fighting a guy with less than 15 KOs, 
who himself is going to be there trying to look slick. Who's not going to be there for the KO. And who, if he goes for the KO, is going to find out that he's fighting a slick southpaw who might want him to pursue him. So he can look good by showcasing his defense. Then you realize that this fight is mispriced. I'm expecting the fight to go several rounds. I think the Les Pierre possibility of a upset here in a fight in which he's a greater than 5 to 1 underdog is good speculation. So for betters, I like the over. For speculators, let's add in the underdog simply to win. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.